you're live. Holy stromboli. The advantage of being a VTuber is that I can eat uh, on live all the time and no one knows. I'm right? Just isn't that and so nice. doing Who this? Knows? It could be anything happening. It could be I'm just yawning for some reason. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Don't worry wow. about it. Don't worry mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> Right. So hey, welcome everyone. This is a pretty informal panel. We don't we don't have any like particular facilitatrix here. Um, however, I think we should go around and introduce each other. And I want to go not first on it because it's fun. Wait, I am the first one in the list. I should go first. I'm, I I see I see how we're laid out. I'm over there. I'm gonna go first, uh, and then we'll do Krista and then Kat and then Amy and maybe maybe the way we can do intro things. So hello, I'm Bunny Arted. I am also Millie. I am a cozy comfy VTuber and I am a trans woman and a complete dork. Um, my pronouns are they and them or she and her and I love you and I'm very excited to be here talking about this stuff. Um, part of how I explored myself ages and ages and ages ago was through tabletop gaming. Uh, so this is a topic near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Firing it over in this direction because everything is mirrored for me to Krista. Hi everybody, I'm Krista. I'm a, I use a she, her or they, them pronouns. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be on this panel because I am a 35 year old uh very recently sort of figured out non-binary person uh you grow up in you grow up in the age of girl power and the idea that being a girl can mean being a boy and so you think oh well I can just be a girl that is a boy right oh wait that's a thing <laughs> so took me a while to get here had to shake off the shackles of the spice girls but we got here uh I'll pass it over to <laughs> kat <laughs> hey everybody i'm kat and today i guess i'm making up the ah surprise face uh, i'm making up the second half of our v2 bunny squadron um woo. Woo! our numbers grow um so my name is kat i'm also known as captain starbun and i use she her pronouns and Tabletop role playing games was also also a significant part of uh, me finding my identity, and so it has a special place in my heart for it. And awesome, passing awesome. over to Amy. Hi, I'm Amy. I use uh, she, her, and they/them pronouns, and uh, you can I also go by uh, paradoxical ghoul, the ghoul, etc., so on and so forth. I don't remember what everyone else was saying. It just in head and gone. But hi, yes, uh, I like exploring <laughs> gender and expression and identity in tabletop RPGs. I think it's a great place to do it. And uh, I hope that we can, I'm excited to talk about it. That sounds really, really awesome. I want to answer the very first question from Chad, just to explain it. Bongmaster is asking if I bit you because folks have decided that becoming a rabbit VTuber is contagious as I seem to be producing more and more of them. So the answer is no, I didn't bite you, but clearly some bunny did. Some? <laughs> some bunny. It was Vincent. Vincent some bunny. It, Vin I mean, Vincent broke rabbit. the internet and he obviously broke me as well. <gasps> this all checks out. This friend. all checks out. <laughs> 50% bunny power, 100% awesome. Oh my gosh, can confirm. Can confirm. Can also so, confirm. I like I like the loose structure formatty idea sort of thing like this. Um I think um Chris, you were saying that this this is a more recent thing for you. Is hmm. is there stuff that you want to share about that? Sure. Yeah. Um as I sit here and eat nibs. Um, I know I've got the perfect time. I, I was once mm -hmm. a waitress and so now I cannot be stopped. <laughs> You you instinctually know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. So I'm a, I was a person like I find it I find it very funny. Of I feel like a lot of I was kind of the opposite. Of, I feel like a lot of people. A lot of people when you're talking about um, you know, not being straight and not being cisgendered, a lot of people when they think about those feelings, they assume that no one else feels this way. So I must be wrong. I was the opposite. I assumed all girls liked girls too. Um, and all girls wanted to be boys some days. And that was just normal, obviously. And so I'm just a tomboy who, you know, likes girls occasionally, but I guess I should probably date boys because that's what you're supposed to do. I was the very dutiful eldest daughter. What do you do? Um, but it wasn't um, my, my younger sibling um is uh also trans and identifies um or um is uh queer and and trans and 
went through a lot of that from a, like accepted that at a very young age and found that and I didn't deal with it well from my previous experience of like I had a lot of friends that lived a very like it was the early 2000s and mm. the there wasn't a lot of wholesome lgbtq activities available so all of my friends yeah. <laughs> all of my friends that i knew that took that experimented in uh, like gay spaces it was raves and drugs and a lot of really like not great stuff and so i was so afraid that my sibling was gonna like fall into that and that was the connotations that i had as a young person um and I mean, I loved my friends and I cared about them very deeply and I didn't care that they slept with other people or like fell in love with other people. Like, I didn't care, but it was very like, this is the lifestyle and I see my sibling trying to emulate that. So that mm -hmm. was the thing I was concerned about. And um, I I didn't do a great job by my brother and I, and I feel very, very bad about that in hindsight. And I, I worked very hard to make up for that. Um, and then very much push myself as an ally of like, I'm going to support my brother and I'm going to do this and I'm going to be a, a real great ally. And then started realizing, oh, wait, <laughs> I, I am those things. And maybe, maybe it's not just because I was always like, oh, well, everybody feels that way. Why does anyone need labels? Why do you need to label yourself as this? Everybody feels that way. And it's like, no, no, it's <laughs> you feel that way. Not everybody. Uh, yeah. And so it, it, it was a very more recent realization of going oh right I had to interact with young people that was the problem I had to interact with younger folks that were like no no there's there's words for the things that you are and you're not using the right ones here here's a vocabulary from our young people brains no darn That's young people actually mm -hmm. Raps yes my girlfriend, is, my girlfriend is nine years younger than me and so uh, they have taught me many nice things <laughs> Nah, that's awesome. I'll say I can, I can definitely relate to some of that too. I, I remember growing up um, and being pretty unaware of transness as a thing, but that, you know, you could be gay or, or a lesbian maybe, and that was maybe okay. We were sort of debating it at the moment. Um, and maybe you should stop calling people those words as, you know, an insult or something. Who, who knows? Um, and it, it was enough that like my, my friends were calling me a girl's name as an ongoing joke that wasn't meant cruelly just conveniently having a neutral name anyways uh that it was very very entertaining to me looking back on that going they all just sort of assumed and knew and fully said openly that i was just a, a girl pretending otherwise that whole time and none of us understood that that was a thing <laughs> None of us had the words or language for that. I wasn't the only one in that group either. Um, and I just can strongly relate to that. Well, everyone feels this way sort of thing. Like, who wouldn't want to be a girl? Have you seen girls? Oh my gosh, cripes. Like, yeah, okay. Obviously, someone wants to, 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 everyone wants this. Obviously, obviously. But what the poor, naive Dungbat didn't know was that not everyone felt this way. So, hmm, hmm. <laughs> And I, I think I figured stuff out for myself a little around a decade ago, maybe slightly more than that. Um, and one of the first places that I actually really explored any any of that stuff was in tabletop gaming, because I somewhat recently started to get in playing games with you adorable dweebs. Uh, and I had no idea how this crew was going to take that, how things were going to go or, or anything like that. So I used tabletop gaming to put the feelers out and also to explore a little bit for myself. So. It was really, really important to me. I even wrote a whole poem about it that I shared at Poetry Night a couple of weeks ago. It's a me style poem though, so it's just a giant ramble for like a thousand words. Don't <laughs> you don't want to deal with it? <laughs> That's awesome. Um yeah, I mean, I of course can definitely also really relate to, to both yeah. of you. Um I like I've been non-binary for quite a while. Uh, I've been through the entire uh, spectrum on that now, starting off as a um, identifying cis male, and then uh, moving into um, like mask non-binary with he they's, and then uh, going over to they them, and then going over to, to uh, she they, and then finally settling on she her after a while. Um, and I mean, for me personally, like I've been, 
Uh, I actually just figured out it's been eight months uh, to uh, to the day that I first had my very first conversation with a doctor about hormones. Um, and I'm hopefully getting them soon. Yay. Uh, but uh, That's so exciting. In, you know, like with experiences and stuff, you know, I, I obviously knew I had a really great uh, group of friends to support this and um, to, to support me. And I knew I, I had a lot of uh, really good resources going into this as well that I know a lot of younger trans people have not had. Um, so I'm very, very lucky in that regard. And that when I have a question about uh, something trans related, I have multiple people that I can talk to. It's like, oh, got a weird hormone related question. Well, one of my trans friends has probably experienced that before. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it was, uh, for instance, when I came out to my mom, um, one of her, you know, one of her first questions was, uh, one of the first things she said to me, she's like, oh, well, you never said anything about it before. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I thought it was normal. I thought every guy woke up every, you know, every day thinking, God, I really wish I'd been born as a girl. Life would be so much <laughs> nicer if I was born as a girl. And, um, you know, like I thought every guy hate, hated the equipment they were born with um, as much as me. And so then when I started to realize, wait a minute, those are trans thoughts. Um, Whoop, ignore the foot. My tractor is having a problem with its life today. It's going to cross my legs differently. I put it under my desk and it was like, maybe your foot is up here. We don't know anymore. Don't worry about it. We're all fine here. The foot flies. That's that's just how gender works. Woo! Um, and like, it was really funny for, for me because uh, like, I, you know, I'd been non-binary for quite a while and I have had a couple characters uh, kind of go through that as well in, in, uh, dork tales and stuff and mm-hmm. um and then the way i kind of figured it out myself was um i had i i was in an online game with somebody uh with a couple of friends and uh, i had only ever identified as female uh with them and uh they were talking about online dating <laughs> and they're like cat you wouldn't know what it's like to be a guy in the online dating world and i'm just like oh but i do <laughs> and they're, they're like oh are you are you trans and what i meant to say was no i'm non-binary what i actually said was yeah i'm trans and then i kind of just shut down for a couple minutes because i'm like wait a minute that's right oh, no that feels right that's true oh my god i'm trans <laughs> after some of my friends for the last like 10 years have been like hey you you know you're trans right no and i'm just like i'm not trans of course i'm not trans and i'm like you know you're trans right right <laughs> no <laughs> so, big egg energy i, I feel Absolutely. like a lot of our friends know before we do well i was the only one who was surprised he's excellent <laughs> Like, I was the only one in my friends group that was surprised by it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like tabletop uh, role playing has really, really helped um, me to explore that as well. So it's it's really great. That does sound really great. Well, you, Amy, I hear you have oh, a rant. Oh, I should say something. Oh, you I have should. a rant. Okay, well, first <laughs> off, I'm going to say I generally go with... Um, non-binary agender somewhere in that realm the cons i don't really like when i see i'm like oh that's a woman that's a guy that's a non-binary that's a gender queer and i'm like i don't know how much any of this applies to me and i don't really feel like any of them and that took a long time to figure out because when you're like trying to define yourself on the absence of of something of the of characteristics and traits it's really difficult and challenging to place yourself and orient yourself in the context in relation to other people especially when you don't have anything don't have terminology for it to figure it out and i sort of went through this Mm. already when i when i realized that i was very much in the asexual um camp (laughs) so to speak um because like other high school you're like oh well i don't like i don't feel anything strong towards guys or girls or in anywhere in between or outside of that so i guess i'm straight because you're the default (laughs) Because that's the the quote unquote yeah. def 
fault yes. and all the yeah, problems that come with that content idea. Yeah. Um, so it took a while. And then, so I sort of, because I'd already gone through the asexuality, I was like, okay, well, a gender does make sense. And sometimes I feel a little more like I fem like present feminine because I really like a lot of the clothing. I like the styles. Um, I do makeup as a costume. It is almost always for like going to some fancy of, of like an event or for stream. I don't just put, I usually don't put makeup on for my day-to-day -day life. I don't care for it. It's costuming for me almost all the time. Yeah. Um, but I have a rant, sorry. This gets to the rant, which is the <laughs> importance right, get to the rant. of language. And Christy, you touched on that about like talking about having boxes, terms, labels, and language is thought, thought impacts language and culture. That is just the truth of it. We mm -hmm. crucially integrate our language and our way of thinking in our identities, in our culture, in how we perceive the world, in how we interact with other people. So if you don't have the terminology to describe something, to explain and describe an experience, to explain what is happening, it isn't suppressing that language and those new terms is a way of suppressing that concept as a whole and it is very damaging and harmful to people who need that kind of language to understand themselves and their identities and relate to other people and understand that they are not alone we need terminology we need these words so that we can actually make connections with other people. Language is connection. It is communication. It is how I express what's going on in here in this mush of, of, of muscle and fat and neurons and just nonsense piloting this skeleton Gundam <laughs> and somehow express that going into the next verbally panel <laughs> into, to, into a format that you can then understand and conceptualize and understand what the hell I'm talking about. Language is important. Mm -hmm. Terminology is so critically important. We need these words. Yeah. And that is the that is the cliff notes of my rant. No, I, and <laughs> the I, cliff I, notes honestly, of your rant. It, the, the fact that, like you were saying, like the absence of, like, I think that was like people put the label of tomboy onto me when in reality, I just wanted to do away with it altogether of like, you know what? No, I'm not mm -hmm. really like, I, I don't feel like any of that. Like I identify as a girl because that was my friends in school and people told me that's what I was. And, yeah. and it was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of kind of forced empowerment during my formative years. Um, and so it was really a nice feeling to be like, I have a community and I have a group of, of women and girls that are all strong and powerful together. Um, but at the end of the day, like all of the stuff that actually describes what is woman, I don't, I don't care for it, but I also like, I, I always joked I was my father's favorite son uh, before my brother transitioned. <laughs> so now I can't say that anymore. Uh, Cause it's just, it might still be true, but it'd be rude. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> but I was, I was the one that, <laughs> I was the one that like, I was out in the shop with him. I I've always been big. Like I've always been way bigger than everybody else. I was always the only girl on sports teams. Um, mm -hmm. And so there was so many parts of my life that it was like, well, this is what boys do and I don't feel like a boy but I also like don't feel like it's against girlness so I don't really subscribe to that like it just the fact that people got all uppity about the fact of like what what I was doing wasn't girly or was boyish was it, it always seemed like well why do I like you're the one putting this stuff on me I don't want any of it like yeah, I like, just mm, why yeah. do you care so much about me stop yeah. <laughs> yeah um and on a, a, sim a similar vein you know like uh every now and then like i you know when i'm doing my makeup or i'm putting on you know a pair of pretty heels or whatever you know i look back to when i first started to think think about it uh probably five or six or seven years ago now when i first started to realize that oh i like i really like girly things <laughs> and like the first time I started to like wear like heels or nail polish or whatever, it was always, I would, I would always be 
worried that if I went out, somebody that I knew would see it and it would be weird. And I, I was always, I always felt really embarrassing. Um, and, you know, because as someone who identified as being a cis man, um, you know, it just, it, it felt like it was weird. Um, Mm. or like that that it was that that it was wrong for me um you know and all my boyfriends who are all like cars tools right. oh i'm a guy i'm full of testosterone um <laughs> you know like what? the the thought of some of them being you know seeing me this six foot one person you know in really girly things would always just kind of at the time felt embarrassing but now it's like oh yeah that's i mean that's just who i am duh but let tall mm -hmm. girls wear heels it's fucking amazing i was wearing <laughs> seven wear inch heels, heels She's earlier today the ceiling of my house no, i felt so no. bad I, I walked into chris's house i was six foot eight <laughs> i wear like... the same heels in this <laughs> but well and and i think that really plays into the fact of like you know why like like when you think of androgynous it's still masculine presenting right like mm -hmm. like it, it's so like you were like amy was saying it's like well i like to wear girly things because they're fun and they're interesting and you can and there's such a variety of stuff that's available unlike more traditionally masculine clothing like let men wear whatever the hell they want like right? you wear whatever the hell you want mm -hmm. absolutely ooh, ooh, ooh. oh it drives me nuts when someone like oh but that's a girl it's like but that's girls things and i'm like if you're a you're a if you're a guy and you want to wear it it's for guys because a guy's wearing it exactly it turns out the, the rules are made up and the points don't matter yeah but we've been taught to believe otherwise for way too long it's like the classic oh well um do you want a bikini body put a bikini on you now yes, have a bikini exactly. body do you want the body of a god i don't know just like whatever. be zeus Ex yeah. without the <laughs> yeah. without the gross don't do the bad stuff i was gonna say <laughs> un, given, but i realized that would be, be being corrupted an case. awful <laughs> i was gonna say person yeah. but not person yeah, yeah. Well, I, a I bad think this bean. Just a kinda, a it's bad a bad bean. bean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we tie all this kind of back into gaming, I think this is a lot of like, I know even myself, the you know the few times I've DM'd and things like that, I have a tendency to just automatically make every NPC male, and it's just mm -hmm. like an auto response of like that's the norm, and I'm yeah, it's, it's the default for human yeah. in how a lot of where we're taught to think about society. Yeah, cis straight usually yeah. white male yeah, yeah. some dude duty mcdooding's in the fourth yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah literally that's the official name i guess yes yeah. it is now every that's, NPC. that's something i've always i've um both in um uh the adventure zone i mean aside from our channel obviously but um like the adventure zone and dimension 20 have their absolute forefront of like at least like griffin and brennan the the two kind of drivers of it of their very very like no no there is a very diverse world and everybody is you know different races different genders different sexualities and is very cognizant of all those people being different um and providing that representation from an npc perspective mm -hmm. i think is really important for dms I think so too. And I, I think you had on something very important too, is that it requires like being cognizant of it and it requires intent behind it because we were all raised in a, you know, a sexist, racist, uh, cis, cis hetero nonsense society that, that teaches us that when you think of a person, you think of a white dude behind a bar with a gruffy beard. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's not a, not a super accurate representation of the, the kind of world that really exists in real life. And that likely exists in your fantasy world, unless you're running a real weird one, in which case maybe don't sounds very boring um, i want to play a different game yes <laughs> yeah and when people start especially when you start getting into fantasy worlds and, and role playing and tabletop rpg rpgs it's well we've entered most in many cases if you're playing D, &D it's this is a world where magic exists we have multiple mm -hmm. like uh 
<laughs> Why the who, hell? Who remembers the cursed belt that changed your sex? <laughs> what? Yes. Like, I do not remember this. This was it was a it was a gag item back in the day, but it was in it was in oh, three so e- three five and earlier. But it like yeah three five there was a belt that you could get that it was it it seemed like a gel a belt of giant strength, but you put it on and it swapped your gender. The idea was is that like tough guys wanting to put on their belt of giant strength would turn into women. Where do I get one? Yeah. Bimbo That's application like... <laughs> time, right? The number, the number of times where, I was like, can, can I, I buy have this? one of those in real life? Especially if it's a belt. You can just like take it on and off. Like for yeah. like, agender, like non-binary people, the idea of being able to just like swap it in and out. Yeah. So good. Anyways, this is the the, 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 yes. the short version of why you should play Eclipse Phase. Rant over. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, and then, like, I was just thinking about like we have spells like reincarnate, which I think is the right one I'm thinking about, which like which is a yeah. random rule on the table. So it's like, well, I guess if we're talking about identity, it's well, what's where does that come from? Is it like the person inside the body? Like, how do people handle that? Like, Fizzy rabbit if, some, if someone has a very strong sense that they are a certain way, and then they end up reincarnating into something else, or something else happens and magic affects it, and blah blah blah. Yeah. How? How much? I just I feel like I see I would ex- a lot of people would be like, oh, they're like this thing now, and their behavior totally changes, and it's like, well, you can still be the same person. They're still the same person. Yeah. Um, quick interruption. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you so much, Fizzy Rabbit, for fifty dollars. Yeah. That's amazing. So thank you so much. It. Oh my gosh. Um, any bunnies Fizzy everywhere? Mm-hmm. So many, so many rabbits. So many bunnies. Mm-hmm. Um, just Can't a reminder. Uh, yeah, we're we're taking tips today uh, and any day really, but today we're kind of pushing a little bit to help us <laughs> run more stuff like this and have amazing people here yeah. to talk about cool stuff. So, continue, please um so, amy while, while we're paused i want to do a really quick oh, yeah. check-in too for for our team is there anyone on our team specifically trying to watch chat for questions i have it up but i'm finding it difficult I, to read I, I, because i've got it reason, i'm also looking yeah, yeah, amy, yeah amy, i'm also checking awesome. um yeah. amy were you were you done i don't remember what i was saying so oh, go ahead okay. uh, carry on so uh carrying on what uh from what amy doesn't remember uh, uh my wayward bun the, carry on my wayward saying. bun <laughs> carry on my way yeah, i am the wayward bun um Bun number two in this case. Um, you can be bun number one. This isn't going to be a bun competition. Bun count. You can be bun one uh, and bun A. Oh, bun A? Bun, bun A. a. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so with the whole like reincarnation thing, um, the way that I kind of see reincarnation as working is kind of like what you were saying, Amy, you know, like, it's more based on, you know, like, obviously, it's a random role. um, But I mean, I'm assuming if you're going to be using reincarnation in game, you've probably had some conversation with the DM on what it's gonna look like. Um, And I mean, that was the entire basis for my, um, my Icewind, Icewind Dale character, Katarina um she was born as a male dwarf and um then after being not the greatest person in the world in terms of uh certain things uh with the king's uh partner um he left uh and ended up getting you know murder hoboed um on his way into icewind dale and a wayward wizard reincarnated uh, reincarnated him as Katarina. Um, and later on in the campaign, we came upon the uh, thing that, oh, well, we could change, <laughs> we could change you back if you want. And Katarina was kind of like, you know, I, th- this is right. Mm-hmm. This, this, this is, this is who I'm supposed to be and who I should have been all along. I think that's um, really important. Yeah, being able to explore mm-hmm. that too in a context. Well, and I mean, like that was before I came out as trans. <laughs> um, we we did we played that, um, and so I mean that was a really good lead into me thinking more on that for myself. Um, on top of the fact that all my characters are female, almost. 
<laughs> mysterious. Uh, mysterious. Mm. Uh, who would have? Who would have thought? But um, yeah, like that, that's kind of the way you know. And I, mean, I know with uh, with shards of Nern with Zeno, uh, reincarnation was one of the things that we were actually throwing around you know around the table to facilitate uh, the transition to Aeson. Uh, I think the way we did it ended up being much better, but you know, reincarnation was one of the ways that we were thinking about doing that, because it's kind of the way I see reincarnation working. So, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, it's, I think a, a really key part. I love the idea of reincarnation or something like that being done randomly. I think it's cute because body, of course, does not equal gender in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. I think something just to make sure that we're nailing home for anyone thinking like, "Oh my gosh, I want to do something like that." Is to one thousand and two hundred and fifty bajillion percent ensure that everyone at your table knows you're not trying to make this a joke. Yes, yes. The stuff Absolutely. cannot be played for laughs. You cannot allow it to be played for laughs, or you will build a space that is unwelcoming to trans people. And mm -hmm. if there's a trans person at your table who's using this to, to sort of explore how you feel about it, they're probably not going to have a really good impression of you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the a, a dude in a dress has been such an such a comedic capstone that mm -hmm. it needs to die <laughs> oh yeah that entire trope as like oh yeah. look at this you know we're getting him to do something super embarrassing here yeah exactly and it's like um... the, the only time i find a man in a dress funny is when it's a guy who's like whatever heels aren't that hard and then they can't stand and i'm like yeah mm-hmm <laughs> say what now that's funny yeah, turns out they're oh, kind of complicated and that's not even about hurt? and that's no, not even not. about the dress that's yeah. about making assumptions on a, per a false perception mm -hmm. and it's, it's a toxic that's masculine totally different. idea yeah it really yeah. is mm -hmm. i mean well women do sort it, of so a it can't come be up hard. for a sexist thing but really i mean like so, so much of this is rooted in the idea that masculinity is superior to femininity, right? Like that's so, the core. Oh, of all absolutely. Is that a dude sorry, being degraded into being feminine is is therefore the worst, funniest thing imaginable. Yeah. Uh, and that can only exist in a deeply sexist point of view. So if you think that's funny, I'm sorry, you, you got some work to do, bud. Yep. Just a little. Or, you know, like, yeah, just that entire societal norm of masculinity being, or guys being superior for whatever reason uh mm -hmm. it's it's just ridiculous it, it's and i mean i'm you know i can't go out and say that um there are times that i definitely do um enjoy the inherent privileges of somebody who does still look masculine and sound masculine on days where i just don't have the energy to be questioned or have somebody mm -hmm. look at me funny for walking out of a women's bathroom. Um, yeah. You, know, you because still I, have that bit of safety. I, I still have that bit of safety and that, you know, I haven't started hormones. I do still have a beard if I don't shave for a day. I, my voice is obviously still quite deep. Um, so I, I do still have that safety net to fall back on if I have to. And well, and kind of ironically as well, like I've always seen in um, like uh, trans men to be much more overlooked from that kind of a perspective because it's okay for women to look like men mm -hmm. because masculinity is normal or is, yeah. is the superior, or the, the whatever is the default. Um, and so I've always felt that like for trans women, it's so much harder because like you're have like you're standing out pretty much no matter mm -hmm. what you do because yeah. because a masculine person wearing a dress is so much more like acknowledgeable than a girl a feminine person in pants with short hair yeah that's true yeah well there, there's something about um threat level there too right yeah. like a someone who, who's supposed to be handed the keys to the kingdom to be a masculine masculine man man um saying no and choosing intentionally or at least decreeing to to out and be be openly feminine despite what they've been offered is an existential threat to masculinity as a in a, as a superior idea and i think that that's the root of why so many men are threatened by trans women's existence yeah. because it proves to them that 
that maybe masculinity isn't all it's cracked up to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So I see your fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, I was just wanting to go into, um, because we had a question on the last panel about voice acting, and there was a question in Mm. chat that was asking if you, so we've been talking a lot about, I guess, playing your own gender and playing, like kind of breaking the gender norms and et cetera. But if you are wanting to explore that and ha- and are just getting into it and you want to play a gender that is different from the one you are currently presenting as or have previously been identifying as or you're still doing that work for yourself, mm-hmm. how do you play those characters without it be ter- becoming a caricature? How do you how do you voice them? How do you present them? Like, what do you do so that you can start exploring that in a way that isn't going to act like if you have a trans friend at the table who isn't necessarily out but knows that this about themselves um and you want to start exploring it how do you do it without making yourself and the space unwelcoming to them or how do you how do you facilitate that and even as a dm doing a female character or a male character Mm -hmm. or something opposite of your gender in that that way yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that that's a, a very, very good question. I think part of it could be like it could, could it could very easily come down to transparency. If it's something that you're feeling uncomfortable about, I don't see any reason not to discuss that and say, you know, you describe the character, you say what they're saying, um, and you can even say, you know, like I, I hope that I get this voice and these these mannerisms right, or here's what I'm going for with this, because there, there's sort of multiple ways to do like to get character across in a tabletop game. You can put on your accent and your fake mustache and be Professor Bunnington the Fourth. Or you can say Professor Bunnington the Fourth with his massive mustache walks up to you and says, or gestures to you in this way and says, there are multiple ways to get that stuff across. You can talk in your regular voice. You can move with your regular mannerisms and describe them like you're describing them in a book and slowly move towards those sort of like could be caricature, could be a character kind of things um, as you get more comfortable with it. And I, I think being transparent is is good for a DM to do. Mm-hmm. Like the little DM sheet, it doesn't need to be a barricade where there's, you know, no communication behind it beyond role initiative. Uh, I think it's totally fair to be a bit of a, an open book as a DM and talk about this stuff and say, hey, so here's how I'm hoping this character comes across. Uh, or to even describe that when you're describing them, say this is the character, they, they they dress this way, they move this way, they act this way, and then you're voicing them and maybe your voice doesn't quite communicate that, but you've already described them. So at least your intention is clear. Hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. there's been a couple of um, uh, in uh, I'll go back to the Adventure Zone because I feel like they've done it relatively well a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Both Justin and Travis have both played female characters um, and I think they both did it. I, I think they did it very well. Like both of them that, you know, they, they let their voices raise a bit. So like, even me, like I'm pretty deep voiced. So it would be the difference of me speaking here to me speaking up here. And it's not changing the way that I'm speaking. It's just, I'm a little higher pitched is all. And mm-hmm. I think, I think, you know, just don't go into like, don't let it go. Well, I, of course I'm a girl. So I'm going to talk up here. And this is the only way <laughs> yeah. that girls talk. And this is how girls have to speak. And like, yeah, welcome to Cheer Squad 101. Exactly. Yeah. And you Absolutely. can have those characters. Like, that's the thing. Like, you can have those characters. Yeah. That's, especially as, like, a DM. Like, some of your NPCs, if you're doing a high school thing, some of them are going to talk like this and be really excited to see you. Yeah. Um, oh, my God. Exactly. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> mm-hmm. good. Those people exist. They do. They do. But I, I think that that's a really good point there, though, is that when you're getting character across, you don't need big things you you just need a small consistent thing and that will communicate to that character thing it can be as subtle as changing your posture or slightly altering your voice or speaking more slowly or stuff like that when you're embodying a character you don't have to lean too hard on stereotypes if you're describing think, and you're doing kelly one does small that thing really well. i think kelly does it really well too it's really so true. I don't just go like cars yeah Muscle car, bro. The thirds. <laughs> third duding, third dude, the dude, why, the dude, the dude, is, is an esquire the dude, dude, but they are dude, dude, yes. yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would, I keep thinking that I would at some point love to play a much more because a lot of my characters that we've seen on stream so far have been either have been mostly f- very feminine presenting or gently come across that way, or I just never bothered to try and go another way with them except for except for lucky lucky had no concept of any of that and didn't give two sh- like no she didn't care she's just like too perfect. lucky to be gendered yes. yeah yeah no honestly i think there's too much chaos there for anything to ex- there's no yeah. room 
<clears throat> she was dumb as a brick, cute as a brick, and she checks her door at the brain out, uh, like her her brain at the door. There you go. <laughs> she checks her door at the brain. She checks her door at the brain. Is her door at the brain. Lucky thought gender this. was something to eat. <laughs> uh, <not yet>. uh, <laughs> Thank nope. you, Dark Tales. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tasty, tasty so, snack. I mean, the only non-binary character that I've actually overtly played was in a game that you ran, um, Millie. That was the my my character L, my thief, who's, who's, mm. whose mom was, you know, um, a cloud of yeah, swords. Yeah, I remember. A, a, that was a really a, fun a game. I, I would love to have continued that. <laughs> that uh, we never finished it. Like, it's such a fun setting. I want to bring I, that back. How do I explain that my thief is a, my? It's like my mom is yes, a cloud of knives. Is- a very supportive swords. cloud of knives. A very supportive cloud of knives. <laughs> a very supportive yes. cloud of knives. That's the dream, really. Let's be honest. See, that is yeah. the kind of parent that nobody's going to mess with. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Challenging um, hugs, but had your back. Yeah. <laughs> so I would love yeah. to play another character that was more overtly that. Or and I've often considered like, hey, I think I would I would want to play a guy. Like for me, like. I don't have that like oh it, it like that it feels wrong like I don't have that sense in that case in this case so it's something I really do want to explore or maybe if I do try it maybe it would feel wrong I don't know and I want to I want to try it I don't know I think Dortel is just saying do it do it do it yeah do it. Dortel's of course of course I mean I I feel like there there are aspects of ourselves that we bring into every character that we play and I think that a character can be a fantastic way to explore different aspects of yourselves like I I would totally consider playing a character that was pretty stereotypically masculine just for like I don't know entertainment it could be fun to do to put on that silly hat again and be like haha yes Mm -hmm. Uh, or or stuff like that I mean I I think there could be a lot of entertainment and and joy and value from doing so I don't think that has to connect to my personal identity at all oh sorry oh just thinking that like oh wait for for that weva stream my um izzy my gnome i was like oh wait no like they were totally flip-flopping all over the place because like in the second game i played the entire thing with facial hair and i was like you know what this works for them this is that yeah (laughs) Yeah. i think they might be gender fluid (laughs) i think in that case gender was a spell component instead of a snack yeah like (laughs) gender fluid goes into their artificing stuff i guess (laughs) my favorite spell casting focus gender fluid yeah, it's it's so what I... they use to power their mm-hmm. um their robot dog. Hello, tiny orb. I have one thought that I want to make sure we talk about at some point mm-hmm. is ways to bring like diversity and folks that are a little bit outside of your standard fantasy default into a game that doesn't feel fake, that feels natural, that feels like it, it's just a thing that exists as a part of this world instead of a, a something that you're you're trying to do to highlight that haha queer people also exist in fantasy. Even if that's what you're doing, because you're going, oh my gosh, I'm running The Witcher. Uh, we need gays. Gosh, the setting needs gays. The setting is so gay, but it doesn't know it. Someone tell them. <laughs> it's so confused about itself. Tell it. The I'm only one who's going to be surprised. <laughs> who's going to tell them? <laughs> Someone's got to tell them. I feel like a big part of that is that they just need to be there. Like they just need to exist. And having npcs mm-hmm. that just like it's an offhanded remark like it's not their personality it's not their entire everything that they are you know not heterosexual or not cisgendered or not whatever but make it like a passing comment as you get to know that character yeah i, I think that's a pretty solid approach for sure yeah and i mean the the way I kind of see it is the actually to be honest the same way that whoa surprise face um the same way that I'm <laughs> actually kind of uh introducing the people at my work to it um you know for those who know me I work in a very you know uh, stereotypically conservative industry I work in aviation which is very old white cis male dominated um mm-hmm. and like the way I kind of see it in you know, bringing it into in you know in game in a way that isn't like uh you know shoving it down anybody's throat or like you know doing it for the sake of you know do you know like just you know whatever is just normalize it if you know there if there there's a bartender that you know is a gender neat cool that's if they you know if they bring it up neat if they don't bring it up, they're still a gender. 
doesn't yeah you know, and just and just pronoun use you just use exactly they. exactly mm -hmm. and uh i use that same aspect in my work and just trying to normalize normalize it the more that these you know the more these people actually see an openly trans woman behind the desk in aviation the less they'll question it 100 percent. yeah so, that's true establishing that yeah you you exist you belong in these spaces mm -hmm. or yeah it just just anything anything like that um so uh question for dming describing non-binary or trans npcs without othering them Ooh, I think that's a good, Very good question. I think part of it might mm. be like just taking out gendered descriptors, period, and then let the pronoun use maybe give a little bit of that. Because if you're saying like, if it's, say you have a, yeah, a male character, you know, saying like, um, you know, he ha he he's got this very masculine features, or you know, oh well, this woman character, oh yeah, she's got you know really she's she's got curvaceous breasts or something like that you know don't worry about those things but go, <laughs> go more into Irrelevant, like but okay yeah, but like he he's big and brawny she is slender or curvy and they are big and brawny they <laughs> are yeah like i think i think you can you can have descriptors that aren't gendered um like like saying someone is feminine doesn't necessarily mean anything because feminine for dwarves is very different than mm -hmm. feminine for elves arguably all dwarves are masculine and all elves are feminine if you're going by our regular binary yeah i just mm -hmm. i remember seeing well, a post I'm, somewhere oh, oh sorry go ahead darn it we're both too freaking canadian about this i was gonna say i mean feminine may even mean something different between different people totally like even between different players at your table someone might be believe that feminine to them means oh it's clearly wearing a dress with quaved hair and i might think feminine means i don't know like a tomboy top whatever who cares yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> i was just so i saw a post i can't remember where it was it was like a tumblr post or something um Got shared, you know, not on Tumblr. It just ends up somewhere else. But it was like the different. It's like how in D and D, the like the rep, like the presentation of the different, how different races seem to present non-binary or gender queerness in different ways. Where like with dwarves, you've got like got facial hair on 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 everybody in some cases. Like I think we did it in in our homebrew world. It's like the mountain dwarves often have facial hair, and then the hill dwarves don't always. It's like maybe there's variation yeah whatever um mm -hmm. and then like the elves are no, none of them have an ass they're all very like pretty <laughs> and elegant and androgynous in that way kind of like <laughs> ha -ha. Yeah. and then you have the, ruled by the it? one elf with an the, the half line. orcs which are all just like ripped and can crush you between their thighs like that kind of like the like i don't remember Absolutely. the specifics of it but i love that post because i was like okay yeah and then we can explore within and without those and around those and i i don't know i was like huh yeah, yeah okay neat interesting follow-up mm -hmm. question about um how to express someone is trans without doing it as a descriptor now i don't know about i, I don't know about you two but i know that a number of my trans friends uh post transitioning um all will say like you know when i was a boy or they'll they'll say like certain things that might reference to like um oh you know when 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 i still wore no, pants back or when i was like cleverly that. disguised yeah Ex yeah i feel like the majority of trans people i know especially nowadays that it is becoming a little bit like it's it's not as i mean don't get me wrong i'm i'm aware of the the <laughs> yeah, world out there but there is, you know, especially within like friend groups and people, you know, it's, it's becoming a lot more common to be a little bit more like talkative about it and make those kind of jokes. Um, you guys can probably talk to more about this, but I, was gonna I, say, like I, I think you hit on a key part here too, though, is that that requires like a kind of trust and an existing yeah. relationship to make those kind of jokes. True, true, so true. I think mm -hmm. if you have a character that is trans, like unless you're in a world where it's, you know, 
Where are we now? We're in Dirty Pair. We're one in every 10 people who are trans. And if you're a transphobe, random cool people will draw guns to kill you. Yeah, uh, exactly. The coolest setting ever. Uh, if you're not in that setting uh, and they're, you know, trans people are less common or super normalized or, or somewhere in between, it's probably not something that everyone is talking about all the True. time. Uh, but that they may come up in conversation if you know them well and if they trust you, then I could totally see those kind of jokes or those kind of conversations coming up uh, because they're totally regular parts of how you interact with each other. They're, they're sharing aspects about themselves right like remember transness is an adjective not a like noun yes. so a trans woman is still you know tall and a knight and uh all, all of these things and oh sworn to the king etc cetera, etc cetera. it's one of the things that may come up in conversation but probably not the first yeah on on a similar note actually um I'm go going back to referencing how i deal with things at work because i really really try to um well, I'm I'm incredibly open about being trans to not just my coworkers and my friends, but to everybody who walks through that door where where I work. Like I have a trans flag on my desk right in front of me. I wear skirts and heels and tights and makeup and stuff. And you know, I'm six foot one, two hundred and seventy pounds, and if I don't shave every single day, I've got a beard. Um, but you know, like the, the way that I personally deal with it, that I, you know, I know some, you know, a lot of people can't, um, and especially being that I'm in Victoria, um, um, you yeah. know, pe you know, people will, will say something to me and one of my go-tos is, oh, well, as an X man, <laughs> yeah as like an x-man i like that line a this. lot um and like, then like wait what <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, and it was as a, a reformed masculine individual <laughs> exactly I have a lot of friends that like to say they were classically trained as their birth gender yes. classically <laughs> trained I that too. Um, you know, I'm classically trained as a woman i but, yeah so you know voice of god cutting in real quick Ooh. Just to say that if if you all want to get together and run an X Man game of just trans people, I will. When the Marvel role playing game <laughs> comes out, we can make this happen. Plan. Just we're doing this. We're doing this. Okay. Um, all right. Oh all right. It can be. It can be for the for the non binary finies too. I'm just letting. There I'm, you all go. right. Kelly yeah, out. Yeah. Uh, but you know, well, it's, it's really it's, really funny. It, it's yeah. just, it's one of those things where it's like I'll, I'll say, uh, oh well, as an X Man, and it almost always gives the <laughs> wait what. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, I'm trans. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, how's your day going? Yeah, carry on. You know, like. I, I think what you said there, uh, Bunny, as well is like, is if, if your world is a world where you can make those comments, that's the good world, right? And I, I think, I think if you, ha if that is the world you want to build, having characters that are comfortable enough to just throw those kind of things out mm -hmm. is, is maybe a good, ra rather than describing them as someone like, I mean, unless, unless you're doing something like, um, there's a character in Dimension 20 who is sort of commented on of the fact that like, they have all of these crazy tattoos, and then they also have scars that are very clearly uh, top surgery scars um, but mm -hmm. it's kind of said in this just like oh yeah it's just like you know they've got all these wound scars but they also have these surgery scars but then continuing on with everything and that's it right and then use yeah I, I think that's it. really solid I think I mean a key part of why folks and I, I'm not terrifically subtle either hang on wait those are the wrong ones <laughs> <laughs> the sunglasses are pretty cool too. We're, we're not the most subtle about no. like queerness out here in the world, right? And the reason for right. that is not because we we want to rub it in everyone's nose that we're queer. It's that queerness is not normalized, uh, and that we need to fight tooth and nail to be visible. Every time I have a conversation with anyone out there in the world right now and I talk about my spouse, they assume husband. I say wife and they say friend. It is a fight every single day to get my queerness recognized in the real world. And so I'm not gonna shut up about it until it is the most boring possible thing that nobody cares about. Absolutely. Unfortunately, as much as people pretend that they don't care about it, they do. So if you're in a setting where, where queerness is not the, the totally normal status quo, then you're probably gonna have queer people wearing BKD crime shirts. 
<laughs> or yeah, if, they're, exactly. if they're not there yet, then they may be even more subtle, like uh, subtle at all. But if you're in a setting where queerness is just totally 1000% normal, I think the descriptive stuff where it's like, yeah, you're just describing this dude who happens to have surgery scars. You're describing this woman who is a little bit taller than average. Like that's, that's, that's fantastic. But if you're trying to bring in some, some of the real world stuff, we are going to advertise. Absolutely. <laughs> many True. of us are at least. Not all, of course, but many of us will. That's a really good point. And I actually hadn't thought of that. Like, yeah, no, it totally would. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I, if I run a fantasy tavern, you better believe it's going to be like a massive bi pride flag and a massive trans pride flag behind the bar and probably like a staff of fireballs. <laughs> oh, Wait, the staff is literally, literally a fireball. Like the shotgun under the <laughs> okay. bar, but you okay. know, not yeah, like yeah, a yeah. ball of fire serving out. Okay, okay, new plan. New plan. There's a ball of <laughs> fire serving staff. Their name is Regina and they're genderqueer. <laughs> I love that. For them. I love you yeah, too. that's <laughs> when the bartenders actually just, Are they a just gay? A, a star. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Oh, yeah, excellent excellent yeah. Well, yeah i think i think it comes what, what it comes down to is that i i think I, I think like what what kelly had said was was true of like having the the blatant representation of saying this character is trans is important um but finding that balance of of being like well how like describing this character without them saying something you know because like, you could say oh well yeah she's a tall woman you know I, yeah, i'm so? a tall woman and, tall right women and do this they're great yeah exactly it's so part of it too it's like does queerness blatant. and transness matter in your setting like if it's so normalized that it's like yeah this dude's got a husband carry on yeah like that's probably the thing you would mention but if one in ten people are trans then i assume nobody cares in your yeah. setting but i do think you need to make it clear that that is the case in your setting otherwise it could look a lot like erasure well and that and that, exactly and i think that comes from a streaming perspective of like yeah it you know in our worlds we want it to be nor like everybody it's normal like no one is gonna be you know judged because of their sexuality or, or gender or anything like that whereas <laughs> trans dragons yes trans dragons all the way um <laughs> but it, it is like is as as a media property it is important to emphasize when those characters are trans um and and i feel like doing that as a player you know you can sort of set those standards and you can like make that a storyline of some variety and like you can do that in a, in a very respectful way that you can explore but i think when you do have that kind of like one the, the character that's there for five seconds that you want to say like every you know 10th character you meet is trans how do you express that without mm -hmm. pointing out and othering yeah. them because yeah, you're cause... trying to normalize them but pointing them out to normalize them in in a audio yeah. medium it's it's hard mm -hmm. oh absolutely i think in that case then you'd have to have conversations about how regular it is that people are queer and trans like people need to be talking about like oh my gosh my sister transitioned yesterday she got the magical spell she looks fantastic she's so happy yes. like it, it has to just be a regular part of life in in your setting for it to be normalized totally. in that kind oh, of yeah. capacity and like, like having... if, you do, if you want bigotry not to exist the positive end probably should yeah, like having conversations about like, oh, well, oh, well, I use this uh, a potion, like it was really, really good. It was like, it was a super smooth. It was great. And then they're like, oh, well, I use a spell or like, oh, I got reincarnated. That was a little rough. Yeah, got stabbed by a goblin, but I got better and boobs. Or, yeah. or yeah, have, exactly. have, have an, if you have an NPC that's going to that's gonna recur even quickly, you know, mm -hmm. say they go away one day and then come back three days later and show up, have them be a different gender and be like, oh, yeah, no, mm -hmm. I was just waiting on my my spell day. And I'm, I, and now I'm, I feel a lot better now. Mm -hmm. Continue. Right. And just, mm -hmm. and, <laughs> yeah. and then there are the characters who, you know, might be taking a while. I mean, the way that, you know, we as humans without magic, uh, you know, tra transition, uh, which is a much more laborious thing, obviously. Yeah, a little um, bit slow. You know, it's a little bit slow. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, where, it could be as simple as, you know, a, a woman at the at, at the bar 
you know, maybe she's a bit taller than average talking to her friend about how annoying it is to find shoes in her size. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the, the, the they don't too, make yeah. shoes this big. They don't make pretty <laughs> shoes in my size. Oh my gosh! And, and the ones that they do are all like weird fetish website ones, yeah, right? Where it's like, yeah. like it's vacation it's all for barbarians. boots for seven hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 exactly. So like, like you know, little little things like that. But Kelly's conversation with himself in the chat. I love it. It's great. Oh, That's well, so much for the mug I made. <laughs> so much for the mug I made. Okay, it's... actually, see, I think that's a fantastic example, though. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah exactly. it was nice. Like, oh, well, it's shoot, I probably, I probably shouldn't have made the mug without yeah. checking. Yeah, I guess I gotta get another oh, one. I gotta like... regift this. Dang. <laughs> I think that's um, cute. I think that's really cute. Mm -hmm. I think I'm... you can talk about transness without talking about trans people in this context. Like you mm -hmm. don't have to describe the person to express yeah. that the concept and the community exists. Yeah, because yeah, you absolutely you, like if you look at somebody, you don't know necessarily. Like you, yeah. it's not a visual feature necessarily. We are secretly everywhere. We cannot be stopped. <laughs> We've already infiltrated your governments. Yes, hundred um, percent. Yeah, we're like having characters um, be like, oh, like. I've changed my name. Oh, but you changed it last week. Yeah, that wasn't the right one. It's this now. On a similar note to that, actually, um, something that I don't know, so, something that uh, somebody who's just realized themselves that they're trans might drop the wrong name for themselves. <laughs> That's something that Asen mm -hmm. did on Wednesday night um, when she was being introduced to to uh, Tia's father. Um, you know, he, he he was saying, oh, you're one of the right wings. And she's like, yeah, I'm Zeno. <gasps> Shit, Asen, Asen. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. One thing that didn't that I wasn't fully prepared for, actually, was the person who misgenders me the most is me. That I've heard Holy that macaroni. Crazy. Yeah, it takes getting used to. I think because you're so used to autocorrecting yourself and mm -hmm. to trying to, to to fit in and behave like you're supposed to, quote unquote, yeah. as a totally cis person, yeah. um, that 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 can take some time to get used to. I I do want to say that I would like to see more trans guys in media mm -hmm. because that is something I think that gets really um, sidelined or like slips between the cracks. Just this just. just and they're also really important. We really need to be giving them representation too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm on that one. I mean, and the the reason that they're sidelined and slip between the cracks is trans misogyny, of course, because we're the the hyper fixation for yeah. cis people who hate us, and they sort of forget that trans men exist. Yeah. Um, in the which same is not way a great position to be get, in. Yeah, lesbians get yeah, forgotten exactly, because exactly. gay men get focused on. It's yeah, yeah it's anything that you that can usurp the superiority of masculine of masculine and trans men um at least in my experience for the trans men that i that i know have a much easier time passing in day-to-day -day life ignored. or at least or being yeah, or at least being ignored, ignored yeah not acknowledged right away as oh you're you're different yeah, there's no legislation being written about them specifically right now. But quick thank you exactly. to Bunny for the ten dollar tip. Thank you very oh, thank much. You. Very oh my gosh, thank um, you so much. But yeah, no, it's but so it's... I think in tabletop gaming though, I really loved Chris's description of just like describing the scars and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that's a fantastic way to get more trans masculine representation in. It's like you, yeah. you it could even be a way to like maybe sneak really correct yourself if you're like oh right i need to invent a bartender the bartender's name is ted bartenderington the fourth um he's some dude with a beard um oh wait hang on i i, I would like to make this a little bit more more interesting uh so so now he's a trans dude with a beard he, carry he, on he, now he, we know uh, a it. drunken patron dumps his thing all over and he takes his shirt off and his muscles are ripped or like he's he's so ripped <laughs> but then he's got these like mostly faded scars and continuing on like oh yeah or he has to take his shirt binder. off and you can see his binder while he washes it yeah exactly <laughs> or yeah. or it or it could be something you know and going back to what, what something i was saying earlier it could be also something you know like a, a patron sitting in a bar 
talking to you know like his bearded friend about oh what's what's the best way to shave your face yeah and that I, i've never shaved my face mm-hmm. before and what what's the best way to do that totally yeah or some dude talking about how you know he gave birth a couple of months ago and yeah. about how his recovery is going like exactly yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is a conversation we, i just had in real life I'm yes. like, oh yeah carry awesome. on and then we had to pause and we're like wait a minute this would probably be a very confusing conversation for, for some cis people <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> door tales are they trans are they reincarnated into a dwarf who knows we just know they don't know how to shave <laughs> exactly. yeah and that's all we need to know in that context right um I also want to point out that, like, even though we're all talking about this, but there's a lot of, like, we're going to screw this up, too, sometimes. Like, we're not Mm -hmm. perfect. We are, in like, inundated by all this external input and what we've been raised in. So there's a lot of internal work that goes on, too. And we may, and, like, I might find that I screw up, like, and and use overly gendered terminology and go, did I need to do that if I catch myself? Absolutely. Or if someone catches me and was, like... I hope I never, I would hope that I don't do it in a way that ends up being problematic. But if it does, I hope someone tells me about it because I want to fix that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like we can talk about this till the cows come home, but, and, yeah. but there's going to be a lot of mm-hmm. internal work. There's internal yeah. misogyny. There's internal, internalized, to some extent, possibly internalized homophobia and transphobia that we're having to work through. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I like think- queer and trans people have to deal with that all the time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I think that, that is something that really does need to be mentioned too when we're going into these when we're because we're playing a game we're playing tabletop rpgs we're having fun with it it's a game we want it have fun and there's a lot of room to explore and be creative with it but also being aware that we may have to we also have some work to do to make Mm -hmm. it more fun no, um, I think we're basically out of time. We are. I'm just going to throw out something Iron Warrior said, which was um, they were a little concerned about making like transitioning easy by magic and stuff, um, saying worried that uh, making those assumptions or changing it with magic will minimize the struggles of my real life friends who are trans. Absolutely fair. I think that that's, that's totally a real concern. I think someone at the table might be like, well, actually, this is a whole bunch of work. And in that case, perchance, it is a whole bunch of work in your setting. Mm-hmm. And, and again, that's it all comes back to communication, yeah. conversation. Yeah, I think your, so. Yeah. yeah, like really, yeah. I, I think transparency is the best approach for so much of this stuff. Like even for for making mistakes or like stuff like like what Amy was just talking about. I think it's totally okay to at the table go, you know what? I wish that I had described this person differently. So here's what I was trying to get across, or to to be upfront about your intentions with with something like that. I, I think that's totally okay. We're all gonna dunk stuff up sometimes. Absolutely. Uh, and it and- turns out that we're all learning in public, and that that is cool and good so don't worry about it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm sorry i'm a dweeb i can't help myself and i mean you know if in a fantasy setting you know it might be more important for some people to transition very quickly via like magic or something you know for you know say personal safety reasons you know yeah. versus somebody who is okay with taking five or 10 years to, you know, mm-hmm. to do the entire thing. You know, th- there there are some characters who, who might have to, or some players who might have to expedite the transition <laughs> of their character. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, like my character, Aeson, for instance, I was going to have her transition, you know, follow mine uh, initially. And then after, being extremely uncomfortable, I was like, okay, no, we we need to do this. Like, we yeah. we actually have to yeah. expedite this. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's it's a very. I think that's a more of a very personal decision on how that's made. And I think in each setting where that's a possibility, you have some people who do that, and some people who, you know, damn, Maybe I wish I could player- find shoes. <laughs> Yeah, we got to yeah. wrap up, but I was going to say, maybe your players can go on a quest to find a magic piece that is part of the spell and will help you out so that... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's sure. Really maybe, yeah, make it something good fun. Or, or, or why not go... Yeah. Oops, sorry, continue. I mean, why no, not go hog wild? It's May Day. Why not make it about class in, in more way than one? Maybe the magic is expensive. So yeah, for some exactly. people, it takes a lifetime to be authentic to themselves. But for the nobles, it's totally fine. It's no big deal at all. Exactly. Carry on. Could all do right. anything. The possibilities are limitless and we should wrap yeah. up. We only have like two we more minutes. Yeah, we, 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 are, we are done, unfortunately. 
we're out of here so okay. really quick outros um i will go first hi i'm I, i'm millie and or bunny hearted i'm a cozy company vtuber you can find me at twitch.tv slash bunny hearted and here in 10 minutes uh next on my list is kristen hi uh, i'm krista I, you can find me here that's it awesome awesome cat hey i'm cat i um i'm captain starbun and you can find me here again in about 10 minutes well uh amy hi i'm amy uh you can find me at twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash paradoxical ghoul and here on dork tales as a regular awesome awesome we love you all thank you so much for joining us for this panel this was a lot of fun i feel like we could yeah. talk about this for hours and yeah. maybe we'll have to at some point <laughs> that sounds really good yeah. and uh, so thank you so much for being here on this panel, folks. If you liked what this panel, uh, let us know if you like this panel, everybody, and we'll make a longer one next time we have a big event. Sounds good. Sounds thank good. you so much for Love being here. All. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you all in a minute. Bye. Bye.